Um, way down there, it's essentially Miami, right? It's about 45 minutes away. Um, so the other side of Florida, I grew up in a family of five boys. Uh, this is a family photo from two Christmases ago when I arrived at Um We're pretty fun, if you were wondering. We're pretty fun family. Planning to move to Seattle, Washington to study, um, to get my bachelor's degree. But it didn't pan out uh, with some finances and some other things. So I spent my first semester in South Florida studying at a community college. And I was looking for some place to go. Came up here and hung out. I ended up uh, meeting a lot of his friends, which were awesome people. Um, some of them are in the room today. Um, he was a part of a recording studio that was opening up at the time. And I was playing a lot of music. That's kind of what I was pursuing before I shifted to my visual art at the time. Um, and I was excited to maybe be a part of that, if you want to move out, et cetera, et cetera. I ended up in Pensacola. I enrolled at PSC, where I had a lot of my professors are here tonight, um, and just decided to study art because I was always a writer of art, so I thought it might be fun. The um, process and the methodology is actually influenced by my adolescent preoccupation with street skateboarding. Conversational thing is really creative in the ways that uh, street skaters will come up with ways to exploit certain objects or elements in the skating. I kind of apply this, this idea to the way I work and the materials that I'm choosing the way I'm responding to those. Those are this piece. I have these 20 foot long plates and when you extend wood that long they can have a little bow in them and I wanted to use that. I wanted to take advantage of that. Skaters will take advantage of environments, they'll take advantage of architectures and structures. Um, try to do the same thing. Um, in this circumstance, at the University of West Florida, there's this really interesting uh, alcove in the corner of the gallery. That's, there's nothing behind that corner. Some of you have been there, you notice that it just kind of ends. Um, and I want to take advantage of that. There's this wall that's like three quarters of a circle. And so what I did was I set up of these uh, industrial sized fans and create a wind tunnel out of it. So the wind, you know, from the fans pushing against the wall and it's using that, that architectural element to create a work for a viewers to come into and engage with. Also set up at the University of West Florida. And uh, one of the walls is made out of these four glass window panes. And I um, wanted to use that. I wanted to exploit that. So I had these and found these concrete holes. And I created a continuous line of vision. I brought the sun part in and I left the sun part out. And I reconnected them essentially using what's interesting about glass, which is that it's both a barrier and an opening at the same time. Found these concrete holes actually on the side of Joe Patty's. Um, it was months before my show, and I was looking for material. I didn't know what I was looking for, I was just looking for it. And I was driving around. Stop on the side of the patties and like, look, I do this. And then these 30 foot long concrete poles, they weigh over a thousand pounds each. And I was like, oh my god, these are incredible. There's like a hundred of them. And so I thought, oh, what if I can make a sculpture out of them? What would that look like? And so I started to kind of push this idea a little bit. I visited Joe, or not Joe, Frank Patty, and I said, um, Hey, you've got all these poles out outside. Do you think I could use a couple for a sculpture? And he thought about it. He's like, Yeah, you can take some. Well, if you ask me again, like, what do you want me to do? I said, Yeah, you can take them. Dog. There's only one rule is that you can't bring them back. <laughs> and I said, Fantastic. So I started lifting these things up 12 feet in the air so we had to get over this dumpster that was blocking them. It was a circus. My friend Matt was there recording it. Uh, the guy in the distance, his name is Mike, some of you guys know Mike. This guy is the kind of a sort of boss. Somehow, I call him, somehow I got a hold of him. And uh, I'm like, hi, this is Mike. Like, yeah, this is Mike. I'm like, hey, I am trying to move these from you. Yeah, we can do that. No problem. I'm going to go back to uh, All right, let's do it. And so we did. At this time, I'm dealing with really formal uh, interests. I'm thinking about uh, the weight of these. Poles and thinking about how I can use that, thinking about their play, thinking about how can I use that feature in this artwork? How can I have it interact with the 
space that it's inviting. You're not going to kind of interact with the people who are going to, you know, walk around that space. Happening is that the work takes on two levels. You have the very physical way of experiencing the work. You're walking around it, seeing how they're heavy, they're lifted up off the ground, and you see how light is. You see how long they are, they pick up to a point, they, they take advantage of inside space and outside space, they kind of push and pull. Which was interesting to me. It was, it was, a, it was a combination of ways for the viewer to interact with the work. To have an exhibition in their assembly room, which I was jazzed about. I mean, that's a really great opportunity, I think, for me. I really, I really enjoyed being here and working with everybody. Um, and I was presented this space to work in. The first thing is that I, what I was thinking about initially was uh, EMA was formerly a jail, right? which is why there's all these bars around and it's made out of brick and whatnot. And, um, so when I was choosing my material to work with, this is a sketch I made of the, uh, the little space. Um, so one of my initial ideas, a contrast the materials that were already here. So you see, you see a lot of this steel, you see a lot of this brick, you see a lot of this concrete. Cardboard kind of pull itself away from the space a little bit. Um, something less um, immovable, something durable instead of rigid, something that has a life. The uh, assembly room is actually the only gallery space in the area that has windows in it. I wanted to take advantage of that. And so I uh, found these industrial grade suction cups that they hold about 200 pounds each. And um, I wanted to incorporate the windows with, with this cardboard to bring the space in. Um, it came to my attention, curious attention, that we weren't actually going to be able to move the piano from the room. You notice in this first image uh, we got the and because of the doorway size and because of timing, we weren't going to be able to get it out. The situation to deal with is not dealing with space, right? So, like, any object in the room with my objects, suddenly you have to handle that, right? This is a sketch that I made when I was pushing materials around with the... You know, that's another element. The piano becomes another kind of... The same way that the facilities department in nursery was floors dictating a little bit about the way the form was going to be, um, going to come to life. It's the same situation, you know, it's not just me coming in doing whatever I want and leaving. You know, there's more involved. And so, like, together with this spatial experience, together with this bodily experience, it comes, it's kind of more conceptual like the end. You know, I extracted to this cardboard mass, and the mass weighs about close to 700 pounds. I was thinking about, so, you know, I had, so I was in this new circumstance. I have this piano, but what am I supposed to do with it in six days? How can I take advantage of this? Um, so I started thinking about the piano. It's interesting about what's unique about this object, this, this material. And of course, baby grand pianos are really heavy. I found that out when I tried to push it around. And I ran the lines to these industrial grade suction cups that attach to the glass to kind of um, bring in the, some of the room, some of the, some of the architectural elements. Thank you. 